Thanks for joining us. Thank you for participating in the interview process. I guess you can do it a lot of days. Uh, you made this endorsement. How do you feel about getting the endorsement? We're super excited for, for a couple of reasons. Obviously, she's very well respected in South Carolina and around the country. And there's a lot of voters who are still trying to make up their mind in a very crowded field still. And so having a governor that's well respected, who takes these issues very seriously, weigh in, is going to be helpful to our campaign in a major way. But the other is, you know, Governor Haley represents the conservative movement and what it should be about. It's about upward mobility. It's about economic empowerment. It's about fiscal responsibility. It's about turning conservative principles into conservative action. That's what she's done here in South Carolina. That's what we need to do in America. So it's not just a political endorsement. It is an affirmation about what this campaign should be about, and that is taking our message to millions of Americans who perhaps haven't voted for a Republican in the past, but who see us now as the party of equal opportunity and upward mobility. Why did you pick Senator versus Governor Bush? You know, we were thinking long and hard, but I think the main thing I knew is first and foremost on the mind. So I wanted a president who was going to keep our country safe. I'm a military wife of a combat veteran. And military families are going through so much and need so much. So I wanted a president that understood you take care of veterans and you take care of active duty, both, both of which have not been taken care of by Pre President Obama. You know, I'm a governor who understands how hard it's been to fight Obamacare and the EPA, and we need a president that understands the best happens when it's at our states. And then also with South Carolina, look, we build airplanes. We've got three international car companies. We've got five international tire companies. We build things in America. Well, we build things in South Carolina. Under Marco Rubio, we'll build things in America. And so it was how do you get everything you want, but have a person with passion and fight integrity, but humble enough to know that they represent everyone. And after talking to Marco, I know that's the person that next, needs to be the next president. Well, let me ask you about the effectiveness of endorsements, because you endorsed Romney, yes. and he went from 15 up to 10 down, according to Jeb Bush, who just spoke about this a little while ago. Um, do you think the endorsement will help you? Sure. That's why Governor Bush wanted her endorsement, and I respect Governor Bush. Um, the bottom line is that Governor Haley isn't just respected in South Carolina, she's respected nationally. I mean, the leadership she's shown in the last year in the state has impressed people all over America. It's not just going to help us in South Carolina, it's going to help us across the country. And I would also say that if you look at what you're, they're doing here in South Carolina, bringing manufacturing, at a time when America's losing manufacturing, it's growing in the state thanks to her policies, that's what the Republican Party needs to be about in this election, and, and that's why I'm so proud to have her support. Do you have any thoughts about the effectiveness of endorsements within the state in terms of this primary? Well, look, the importance for me was I never not made a decision. And so while it may have been the politically correct thing to do would be to stay out of it, the point was I'm a voter. I'm a South Carolinian, and I needed to get out there and vote. And I know the goodness of the people of South Carolina. They held me up through all of last year. We held each other up. And what I wanted was for the people of South Carolina to know I've talked with all of them. I've found out the issues. I know what we care about in South Carolina, and I wanted them to know what I know. And so I'll spend the next days all the way to Saturday to remind everybody to get out to the polls. And we always say it's a great day in South Carolina. It can be a great day in America if we elect Marco Rubio for president. One of the big issues we hear about, I'm sure you hear it in the governor's office, you probably hear it in the, in the senator's office, uh, Social Security. People are really concerned. Our older viewers write in all the time, asking about it, calling on the phone because they don't have the internet to reach out. Can you pledge to those who are counting on Social Security that you won't cut their benefits? Well, again, one of the reasons why I'm excited about having Governor Haley's support is her parents are on Social Security. My mom is on Social Security. We are both against any changes to that program that would be bad for our parents. But we also recognize that that program isn't going to exist for her, for me, or for our children if we don't reform it. And the good news is we still have time to fix it and to save it without disrupting it for the people that have earned it and are on it now. But that will require people like Governor Haley and myself and our children to accept that our Social Security and Medicare, when we retire in 25, 35, or 45 years, is going to work a little differently than it works for the people who are on it now. We may have to retire a year later than we're supposed to now. Our Social Security benefits may not grow as fast for people who have made a lot of money. These are not unreasonable changes for someone who's 25 years away from retirement. And it's not too much to ask of us after everything our parents and their generation did for our generation. So we are going to save Social Security and Medicare. It's going to help bring our debt under control, and we are not going to disrupt it for the people who are on it now or who are about to retire. And disrupt means no change, no cuts. To the them. only changes I would envision are ones that make it better. 
For example, we should re-examine the cost of living benefit. This year, people didn't get a cost of living increase in Social Security because the basket of goods and services that seniors buy is not the same as the normal cost of living that's used for everybody else. But other than that, it doesn't need to be disrupted in a negative way. And in fact, if we don't do anything about it, any time between the next five to 10 years, we'll have a debt crisis. And then you will see disruptions. And that's why, what I want to avoid at all costs. If you end up in a position like President Obama is in right now, with the death of a justice, unfortunately, and had in the same time frame, this last year of your administration before you, would you forego your opportunity to appoint someone? Well, you have two government? different parts of this process. President Obama has a right to nominate someone. If he wants to, he can do it. The Senate's already made clear it's not going to move forward. And so I'm not saying the president can't nominate someone. He can nominate someone. We don't have to confirm him. And in fact, I don't believe we should. There's now a well-established tradition that stands for 80 years that in the last year, president's nominations made in the last year of a presidency, in the eighth year of a presidency, are not move, the Senate doesn't move forward on them. That should be because the, the president's no longer accountable to the electorate. We're going to have an election in November. This vacancy will be an issue. People are going to choose a new president. And that new president, is, is the nominate that nomination is the one that the Senate should move forward on after the election. Uh, one of our viewers in Gaffney wanted an answer from all of the candidates. We're going to ask you to Confederate flag. You support what South Carolina did with the flag? I do, and I think it was important that the decision was made in South Carolina. What you didn't need is a bunch of people in a studio in Manhattan or in the Capitol building in Washington coming down here and telling South Carolina what to do. This state has proven to the country that it has the capacity to confront issues such as this and to solve it in a way that brought your people together, not created divisions. And the last thing you needed was a bunch of people parachuting in here, wagging their finger around, telling everybody what to do. South Carolina is doing much better than, than the country as a whole. And uh, I think we should take examples from South Carolina and not be lecturing to South Carolina. Immigration becomes a pretty sensitive topic in this state. There's a lot of passionate feeling about it. Explain your immigration plan succinctly, so that people can understand where sure. you're at, what, what you're talking about, because you do get nailed in a lot of commercials for your stand on this issue. Well, my stand is my parents and grandparents were immigrants, as, as were the governor's parents immigrants, so no one can say we're anti-immigrant, but we have to have immigration laws, and that's why I believe we can't do anything until we first prove to people, not just pass a law, but prove to people that illegal immigration is under control and that our laws are being enforced. So until we finish 700 miles of walls and fencing, until we put in place E-Verify, until we have an entry-exit tracking system to, uh, to track so people don't overstay visas, and until we hire at least 15 to 20,000 new border agents, and all of that is in place, nothing else can happen. And after that, we'll see what the American people support. I can tell you what I won't support, it won't be amnesty, and sanctuary cities, when I'm president, are going to lose all of their federal funding. And that was one of the things that was really important. We sat down and had a conversation about it, which was, you know, how do we make sure South Carolina passed one of the strongest illegal immigration bills in the country? And it was President Obama that fought us back on that. And so I wanted to make sure that he was going to stand um, for the fact that, look, my parents came here. They came here illegally. They paid the time. They paid the price. They're offended when people come here illegally. So we want to always remember that we're a country of laws. But we have to always remember that we have to, pay, you know, and incorporate those laws and make sure that those continue to happen. And um, Marco was very much in tune with what we want in South Carolina and what I think he's going to do for the country. Most surprising moment on the trail in the state of South Carolina? I wouldn't say it's surprising, but it certainly yeah. takes you back. And at all of my events, I ask our veterans to raise their hands so we can thank them. And it's amazing. I mean, I'm not saying there aren't veterans in other states, because of course there are. I'm in a state that has a lot of veterans. But in some of these crowds we're getting, literally a quarter to a third of the people in the crowd are veterans. And I bet you if I asked either veterans or people who have loved ones serving now, more than half the crowd would raise their hands. So it's an amazing thing, the contribution this state has made to the national security of our country. And uh, obviously, it's a, I, I, it doesn't surprise me, but every time you see it, it's certainly uplifting to see the contribution South Carolina has made to the defense of this country. Since we went there with the military moment, um, defense and strengthening the United States defense, how is that anything? Well, first of all, national security spending is not the reason why we have a debt. It's not the cause of our debt. And number two, it's the most important thing the federal government does. My position has been that before we pay for anything else, we should fully fund our defense. That We're not doing that now. We are on pace to have the smallest army since the end of World War II, the smallest navy in 100 years, and the smallest air force in our history. As the world grows more dangerous, we are growing weaker militarily. 
So we'll all take a page out of the Reagan playbook. We are going to have a Reagan-style rebuild of our military because it is the most important thing the federal government does, and we should pay for that before we pay for anything else. But defense spending is not the cause of our debt. The cause of our debt is the way Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid, and the interest on the debt are structured for future generations, for people like myself and Governor Hayward <coughs> when we retire in 20 or 25 years. We have to talk about the band-aid just because it's, it's, the, it's the memorable moment that people will talk about. So what happened? You, you wound up getting your first battle wound update. <laughs> it's the first wound I've taken from Marco Rubio, and I'm sure not the last. We went and there was just, there were almost a thousand people out there in Chapin, and they were so excited. And so we were working the lines and we're shaking hands and signing things and taking pictures. It was just an exciting moment, and there was a little speed bump right there. And so as I was doing that, I took a tumble, and we got right back up, and I endorsed it for president. So, so that, that was before that, the endorsement? It was yeah, before was, the endorsement. I didn't even see it happen, but I saw afterwards her knee was a little scraped up, and I was... Uh, I was wondering if that, you know, how that happened, but, I'm, but again, but, she's a trooper. But you know, this is what we do. This is so important. This matters so much to let people know how much we care about our country and how much South Carolinians remember. We make presidents. So this might be a little wound, but I want everybody to get out on Saturday and know we will have a lot fewer bumps down the road if we make sure that we get Marco Rubio for president and get rid of President Obama and get started back on the right track again. One last question about the endorsement. Rom, uh, Romney, you endorsed him, I guess it was a month you know, prior to the primaries and record campaign for a much longer period. Why did you wait so long this time to endorse someone to pick? I mean, is that any reflection you had a doubt about someone? Like no, not at all. You know, I think that, first of all, I think I endorsed Mitt before New Hampshire. And in all honesty, with everything that we went through in South Carolina, I, my focus was very much on the tragedies, on the flood, and everything else. That all of that, just, the last thing I wanted to think about was who I was going to endorse for president. So it was taking care of the people of South Carolina. When I could focus and get past the state of the state and all of those things, that's when I really started to focus in and meet with everyone and find out who has that fight, who has that passion, who's going to go there and straighten up the Democrats, but really bring a conscience to the Republicans. And so once I was able to talk to everyone, I knew that I saw a fighter that we have to have. And I knew that I saw someone that will really build our country back up to what will make my parents proud, that the, that the best thing they ever did was bring their kids to America. And, and in fairness, 2015 was a tough year for South Carolina. You had two tragedies that occurred. Obviously, the whole nation paid a lot of attention to Charleston. You had a thousand year flood. So you know, Haley's doing her job here. The last thing on her mind was presidential politics, trying to bring the state together and deal with these things. And uh, we're just grateful to have her support. It's also a very unusual presidential year. We had 17 people running for president at one time. So it was a pretty diverse field of some very talented people. I mean, there are people in this race that aren't in any more than in any other year would have been front runners. So. You have a picture out there of you shaking the president's hand that apparently is a Photoshop picture according to your campaign. Welcome to South Carolina Dirty Tricks. I mean, do you, do you, what's your experience been with? It's been fine. That's just one campaign that's doing that. It's Senator Cruz's campaign, and it, it is, in fact, the Photoshop. I don't own that suit. That isn't my hand, and I don't wear my watch on the right hand. That, that, that photo never happened, and I think it's part of a pattern, and I'm very disturbed by it. But the good news is South Carolina sees through that. This is an important election. It isn't going to be about these false attacks and so forth. It's going to be about the future of America. And again, that's why I'm so excited about having Governor Haley on our team, because she represents what the Republican Party needs to be in the 21st century. Equal opportunity for everyone to go as far as their talent and their work will take them. And you know, there's no doubt politics is a blood sport in South Carolina, so if you can't you know, fight tough, you don't need to be here. But I think that South Carolinians are much smarter than that. You know, they look through all that silliness, and they cut through and they pick presidents. And so I have no doubt that South Carolinians will toss that out with everything else and really focus on what's best for their families and best for the country. Thank you. Thank you.